in, plugged in, along with some good common sense here. So turn people on to the broadcast. Quite simple. For the people show dot com and everything's there at your fingertips. Beautiful thing here. Patrick Hannon. Who is this Patrick Hannon guy? This is a gentleman. I don't even know if we want to call him a gentleman, but he was a man that uh, was convicted of killing two people in 1991. He was uh, 53 years old uh, at this uh, point here. He's in Florida getting ready to do old Sparky. And old Sparky, by the way, is still in existence here in uh, Florida. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, this gentleman was executed for these murders today. I don't know why it took so long, but uh, here it is. 53-year-old Hannon received a lethal injection. Okay, it's not old Sparky. I just, the electrocution, uh, they, people say it's not in, you know, it's not humane. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not a human thing to do. I'm thinking to myself, it wasn't very human what they did to kill two people. So we just want to give them a humane way to live, uh, you know, and, and in prison, taxpayer dollars. And then we're going to go ahead and just give them a nice lethal injection so they could start snoring and die in their sleep. I, I, you know, I, I just, you know, that wasn't humane. I know, do one to others. But what about the Old Testament? Can we just bring the, the Old Testament in and uh, I, I just don't get it. Seriously, this guy had it made in prison for a while. Then he got his lethal injection, went to sleep, and there you go. But uh, two families had to go through the agony and the hell with this man murdering their their loved ones. And I just always feel uh, pretty crappy just knowing that they got the raw deal. And here's this guy that gets a uh, humane way out and got to enjoy, you know, a bunch of years behind bars eating, drinking, and working out and in the yard and able to have visitors isn't that a beautiful thing? I hope the execution gives the Carter family some peace. I wish I could have done more to save Robert. I didn't kill anybody, but I was there, he said. Uh, as he spoke, one of the uh, victim's female family members cursed. Robbie was a good man and a good friend, and I let him down when he needed me most, Tannen continued. As far as Brandon Snyder, I think that everybody knows what he did to get this ball rolling. I'm sorry things worked out like this the way I, way it did. The same woman who authorities declined to identify later, cursing again in a whisper. Then as the execution began at 8.38 p.m., the woman made eye contact with Hannon and raised her hand as if to wave bye-bye. Hannon's body moved during the execution procedure. His lips twitched, his chest heavied, uh, or heaved, I'm sorry, it heaved. There's a word for you. It heaved. And his arms, legs, and body appeared to convulse a bit. <laughs> a little shaking there. Then 12 minutes after the execution began, he was pronounced dead. And Florida resumed executions in August after making changes to its death penalty sentencing law. The law now requires a unanimous jury vote. It has to be unanimous uh, for a death sentence to be carried out. The U.S. Supreme Court had previously found that Florida's old sentencing law, which did not require uh, unanimity to be unconstitutional, however, however, the new sentencing law did not affect Hannon's case because the state's high court ruled that those decided before 2002 were not eligible for relief. Hannon was convicted in 91 again of two counts of first-degree murder and the slayings of Snyder and Carter. Um, he got his judgment and it's not just the judgment of this world. He's got another judgment, uh, waiting for him at the, uh, throne room there up in heaven where he's going to have to explain himself there. Hannon's lawyers had earlier requested a halt, by the way, to this execution for the plans before the, the Florida Supreme court, but, uh, that was denied. Hannon apparently had asked for a new sentencing phase citing recent changes to Florida's death sentencing system. And Florida Supreme Justice Barbara Parentine, who uh, detested from the rest of the court, 
uh, dissented rather from the rest of the court, wrote that the jury was not given enough information to make an informed decision in Hannon's sentencing phase. So without explanation, last evening, the U.S. Supreme Court denied two last hour requests from Hannon's lawyers uh, to block the execution. And uh, there you go. And uh, it was January, by the way, in 1991, for those of you that might remember the story, when Hannon and his two other men went to Snyder's apartment in Tampa, Hannon's friend Jim Aker initially attacked Snyder with a knife, according to authorities. Prosecutors said the attacks were motivated by Snyder's vandal- vandalizing of Aker's sister's apartment. Snyder was... Um, exonerated by the initial stabbing, and according to court documents, and Hannon sliced his throat, nearly cutting off the victim's head. Carter, who was Snyder's roommate, was also home and fled the violence to an upstairs bedroom when Hannon dragged him out from under a bed and shot him six times, the jury found. Hannon's jury recommended death unanimously after finding him guilty of both killings. So. This guy, definitely in cold blood, uh, clearly uh, sliced the guy. Practically his head fell off. That's six times. I guess he wanted him good and dead. Well, we know he is good and dead. Uh, and there you go. Palm Springs, some big changes taking place in Palm Springs City Council. Uh, that's right. In California, will be 100% LGBT. Well, the two members are installed in December, is what they're saying. After uh, victories in Tuesday's election, Lisa Middleton and Chrissy Holstage uh, won victories on the council, completing uh, the council that uh, will now include three gay men, one transgender woman, and one bisexual woman, according to the Palm Springs Desert Sun. You've now looking at a progressive city that remains business-focused. James Williamson, who run uh, Middleton's campaign, told the Desert Sun, and I think that's what we're going to see happen play out over the next 10 years. For a lot of progressives, they've moved away from the kind of uh, kumbaya uh, politics, and they realize that if they want the social programs they believe are important, we need to hang a strong business base to support those programs. Middleton, a transgender woman, joins Andrea Jenkins and uh, Dancia Rome as transgender people elected to public office Tuesday, according to New York Times, uh, New York Daily News on this one. Jenkins won a spot on the Minneapolis City Council while Rome captured a seat in the Virginia State Legislature. In light of the repeated attacks on transgender people from the federal government, tonight's win by Lisa Middleton in Palm Springs and other transgender candidates in Minneapolis and Virginia are a beacon of hope that voters have embraced values of equality and inclusion. Rick Zuber, executive director of Equality California, said in a statement on the organization's website, by becoming uh, our first transgender person to be elected in a non-judicial office in California, Lisa is paving the way to others to follow in her footsteps in California and across the nation. Osage told the uh, Desert Sun that while the the uh, changing demographics in Palm Spring and local party leadership played a role in her victory. She said that she was uh, boosted to effective grassroots campaigns. Lisa and I ran on being positive and forward thinking and really talking about the issues and hope and change for a better Palm Spring. Hope and change. Hope and change. Okay. That's right. Hope and change. I got to ask the question after uh, drinking out of my For the People coffee mug about all of this gayness going on uh, in our country. And there's no gay phobia here. Uh, I just had a a conversation with a a lesbian lady who is doing some business with me. Very nice person. And she knows my background. You know, evangelical, grew up evangelical. But, you know, I... I have values of my own and uh, stemming from religion and what I believe and deem to be correct. But what majority? So you have a majority, right? You have the progressives now that are running things here at the town council. 
And how do you think that they're going to look out for my values and, and, and my feelings and my thoughts and all these other things? And do you think that's going to be fair? That's progressive thinking for you. That's progress because you're going to move things their way. Yeah, they say it's all about rights, but uh, what about people's values that, that don't very value what you're touting, uh, that, that you're feeling? Um, it, it gets really dicey, folks, when you start talking about rights, because for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, that Barack Obama did it, um, uh, Loretta Lynch, they, they were really, during Obama's tenure, they were so, so good at being able to do the race card um, immersed into the LGBTQ uh, community because it's all the same thing. That's what a lot of a lot of people are saying to the left, the feminist and all this other stuff. This is you know all the same thing. It's because it's, it's equality that everybody should be at the same exact place in, in, in whatever it is that you decide that you want to be. It should not matter. That you should be able to be free to live and express yourself any way that you want, no matter what you're doing to spread this progressivism, liberalism, and all these things into the air. Even if it's wrong, we should have the right to be able to spew our lifestyle on everybody because it's the right way. Um, religiously speaking, um, I don't think it is the right way. I believe that God has made Adam and Eve, not Steve, okay? And I don't say this to put down anybody that is gay, or born gay, and feel that they are gay, and they love their loved one. That's your business. I would just like these issues to stay in the bedroom. Uh, we don't have straight, straight parades, just like we don't have white parades. Can you imagine? White Lives Matter. Hi, I'm Keith Allen. Uh, we're going to have a White Lives Matter parade. In Tampa, Florida today, can, can you imagine the backlash? Do you, you know, they would call me a white supremacist and a racist and and all of these other things. I, I mean, if I had a black Barbie in here, then they would say that I had a black face in here and that I was racist. So you don't do it. You won't do it. Is it really just fair? It just to me, it's just this. This change and it is change and that the progressives say it's a good thing that we should embrace it because we give everybody an equal voice, no matter where you are in your life, uh, whatever it is, they want to be uh, gender neutral. You want to have a penis. You don't want to have a penis. You want to have a sex change and be somebody else. Do it. And you can become this and you become that. Um, why didn't we just be happy with who we are? That's just my takeaway. People are not happy. They really are not. And, Everybody has an agenda. Just remember that. Everybody has something. And I just get a little creeped out when I see this. It is a wonderful victory. Don't get me wrong. For those that are in these positions right now, where Palm Springs, they're touting that it's 100% LGBT. Uh, two members are going to be installed in December after these victories. So now it's completely gay. It's all gay all the time. It's like the gay network. I just don't see what's progressive about that. It doesn't represent my voice, my conservative values, what I believe religiously. How am I represented in Palm Springs? Well, apparently I'm not buying a house in Palm Springs. I'm not going to be moving there because it doesn't represent me of who I am. I am not a homophobe where I, I, I just I feel weirded out being around a gay person. But now you're going to be making the decisions through the viewmaster of what? Let's have another gay parade. Why do we have to have a gay parade? Just be gay. Let's have a straight parade. I'm heterosexual and proud of my heterosexual upbringing and let's celebrate it. I don't want to celebrate a gay parade either. I mean, why don't we just live our lives in our bedrooms, in our houses and, and be done with it? This is just ridiculous. And plenty of states have already embraced that you can get married. You can go into the chapel and then you can get married. You're going to get married and have a good gay old life. I did an Ann Gay, by the way. Uh, this is a true story. Her name is Gay Beamer. 
Uh, my mother was adopted, so it's from the adopted family. <laughs> and the sad story of Gay Beamer, 